Right, well, welcome back, guys. Actually, I'm going to say thank you for joining me on another episode of the Data Chronicles because I have not posted an episode in quite a while. I don't know why. It's not because my hard drive didn't die on me or I wasn't moving or, you know, all that fun stuff in between. That was fun. Hi, my name is Ed of the Data Hack Chronicles. <laughs> and uh, with me today, I am very happy, very proud to have two of my really good friends, fellow Curve Brain Media members and co-founders. Ah. Uh, I'm so happy to have you guys. Patrick Larson of some website that, you know, some videos that he puts, it doesn't get any traction at all. Uh, MILB, you know, had history. Yeah, that guy. How you doing, Patrick? Ed, I'm doing well. So honored to be back on the Dad Hat Chronicles and love love what you've been doing. It's It's been a while, but- um, it, it has honored, been a while. Honor, honored to be on with you and the other guests that I know you're going to be introducing. And so- Yeah. Um, so speaking of that other guest, right? Yeah. Um, this guy, you know- like you said, you know, New York Times bestseller, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, he is. In fact, a uh, great, great author, you know. Yes, I mean, in fact, the New York Times informed us that he was the New York Times bestseller. That's what so. I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, he has, uh, he he writes for uh, some articles for Minor League Baseball. He, he No, not the website, not the, not the uh, league, okay? But Minor League Baseball, which, you know, it's even better for us because then, you know, he's more grounded like us, right? Uh, he has a book. Um, he collects a crap ton of ice cream helmets, which by the way, I owe him one and I got to send it to him looking at it right now. Mr. Paul Caputo, how are you, my friend? Burritos, Princess nope. Leia, and uh, mustard and onions. I like it. Princess sorry, Leia. Are we not doing the uh, famous, not so famous questions yet? I thought well, we were well, doing well, famous. Well, slow not... your roll there, sunshine. Sorry, we're going we're gonna to get to that. Okay, Don't worry, sorry, I'm excited fault. about them too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ed. Hello, Pat. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be on the Dad Hat Chronicles, one of the podcasts that that inspired me to get started on my own podcast. I love hearing that. It, it, Thank you so much. It's a good, it's a good podcast. It's amazing. Oh, you guys are making me blush. What an honor to be here. Do it again. It though. Keep going. Don't stop. It now. is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I was just saying, I literally have your ice cream helmet, the Holly Spring Salamanders ice cream mm. helmet. Is I just unboxed it this week, so I have to send it to you, my friend. So it is here. It is still alive. It, it is. It, it is in all in one shape. So I got to send it to you. That's well, a fun Ed, logo. Actually, yeah, Ed, you actually need to personally deliver it to his door because no, I, I will believe, not. I believe that's how he. I believe that's how he gets his um. His a lot of his ice cream helmets now is that people personally deliver it to on a resident. Sunday afternoon of all times. Sunday right? afternoon, I'm sitting there on the sofa, I'm watching the the Broncos, I'm waiting for the Broncos to implode against the Chiefs. I know we're talking to just uh, baseball today, waiting for but the Broncos to happened. implode. It never happened, and the doorbell rings, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to be some like political campaign. They're going to want my vote, and I'm going to have to tell them this is intrusive and get off my porch and <laughs> get off and, my lawn. Uh, and it's my friend Seth, and he it, not only is it my friend Seth who is sitting there holding a helmet, and it's like red, so I'm like, oh, he brought me a Nationals helmet or something, right? Nah, it was the Great Falls Voyagers of all teams, a team who I have seen in person, and they did not have helmet Sundays when I was there, so I didn't even know that this helmet existed. It's got one of my favorite logos with Orbit, the uh, mm -hmm. the mascot for uh, this team, named for uh, the the Mariana UFO sighting incident, which is such a cool story, is such a great uh, story for a team to be named for. Incredible. And doorbell rings, and here's my buddy Seth, and he's like, "Here, have this helmet. I gotta go. No, I can't stay for a beer, but uh, have a great day." That's just uh, that's just my life these days. People just show up and hand me helmets and then take off. That's how you know you've made it. I know, right? Like, I mean, that's just, that's if that doesn't say the level of fame that our friend enjoys, I don't know what does right there. You know, and it's yeah, amazing. I, I mean, it's evidence. I always everyone thinks I'm making it up when I say he's a somebody, but <laughs> then things just keep happening that keep you know, supporting my conclusion. So tell me conclusion. about it, so, dude. Like, I mean, come on, bro. Can we share into the, into the famousness here? You know, yeah. we're all going to bask in each other's famousness. The Ooh. weekend of May 24th through 26th, we're going to see a Dorm Bulls game and a Carolina Mudcats game. Oh, all of us it. together. Yes. Yes. Let's do this. I'm so May excited. Let's, let, let's do it. I'm, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I've got, I've got some, uh, I've got some plans. I've got to put in some leave at work to, uh, to, to solidify those plans. So yeah, it's happening. I don't care yeah. uh, if you have to 
you know, work from, you know, the Doran Bowls, you're coming, you know, it's going to happen. You know, I have no excuse when it's like five or six hours away. There's absolutely no none excuse. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. There's you none. Know, we're right here on this. You know, There's we're 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 yeah. practic- You know, neighbors. We're very much close. We are, to and them, I so. have absolutely no excuse that I have not been to see you yet. And shame <laughs> on me. Well, you know what? May twenty fourth and twenty fifth, you'll be here. So that's all that matters. There you go. We will with I, a lot of our friends that are coming to the Curb Rim Media Meetup. We'll just put it out there and see who shows up. It's going to be great. Maybe Love one, it. maybe two. It doesn't matter. The three doesn't, doesn't matter. Who cares? We're there. We'll we'll Love just it. be like, join us in section 113. Here's where we're sitting. Come join <laughs> right. us. That's it. You know what? Join us all the way in the back where the bar is, and then you can buy us a beer. That bar is uh, such a great spot there. That they, They've got some good wings. They've got uh, all sorts of beers on tap. That is a that is a, a great addition to the Doran Bowls ballpark right it there. It really is. And they have some yingling beer, uh, which is also very yum yum. <laughs> and uh, summer shandy, so you can't go wrong. And some red oak. I mean, oh, come on, it's good beer. And amazing. And I've amazing. And I've never been to see the Durham Bulls play. So. Wait, what? No, I've never been. Interesting. And yeah, I have already. I mean, I've put out the request already. I want to go to Dame's Chicken and Waffles for like breakfast beforehand. He really so, did say that. He I really, really did, did say that. <laughs> Listen, as someone from Atlanta, as someone from the Atlanta area, I'm never going to turn down chicken and waffles. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> You know, that's something that I have not had here in, oh, in yeah. well, since I've moved. So, I mean, yeah, but I did. We went you know, there. There's... We went there for baseball Palooza and ran into Grant Hill of all people. Grant like, Hill. Grant Hill was there eating chicken and waffles. And uh, and mm-hmm. one of the one of the guys on baseball Palooza did the thing where he went up and bothered him and took a picture with him. And Grant Hill was very kind about it, even though his breakfast was interrupted by some groupie. Sure. And I know we're talking baseball, but the new minority, one of the new minority owners of the uh, Orlando Magic, Grant Hill, he bought mm-hmm. a stake. He bought a stake in the Orlando Magic. He did that. He did. Yeah. Look at that. I will stop. Full stop there because I know this is we're talking baseball. <laughs> yeah, but guys, I just leave happen that. to hear that. And can we leave that stuff for the Dead Hat Chronicle I'm, Sports Show Tuesdays and yes, Thursdays, I'm, nine p.m. Eastern time? Just make sure to tune in. Facebook, man, that's a, re- man, that's a really good show. I mean, it it's really so good. Is. It's been on multiple platforms already from, you know, from, from amp to Podbean now to, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, what these, I say? These, these platforms are just demanding that new show. I mean, yeah. you just keep well, on this platform. Let's wow. not get too carried away. I mean, I did close down an, a whole app. So I was going to say, well, Ed, because Ed there was so much demand, platforms. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> there was so it. much demand that it crashed. It crashed <laughs> amp as we know it. Amp like, was amp like got you know amped. what? We out, we out. We're going to go ahead and. Yeah. Cancel this, we all. And then Podbean, I was they, like, Ed, you're pushing the limit. I'm going to need yeah. you to go ahead and stop. And I'm like, all right, you're right. Well, let's just go on on virtual, on the visual yeah. and audio as well. And so. got and got so amped, it couldn't handle the bandwidth for your demand. It so then not. it had to shut down. Podbean is like, you know, this is going into a beanstalk. We can't, you know, we, we can't stop this. And so you had to go to a video platform. I did. I did. It's I really did. Phenomenal. And, and only in only a few weeks you did this. I mean, this I is did. just incredible. It's it's you know I mean only one man guy. I'm only one man. So uh, and I did this while I'm setting up after moving. I mean, right? Incredible, exactly. Incredible work rate. Like I said, I'm a, I'm one man show here. Uh, right. All right, guys. Well, let's enough of this. Uh, you know, yippee yippee, well, all that. You know, making Ed feel great about himself. Mm. Um, guys, uh, as you already know, as of today, October 29th. Um, we, we already know who the two, uh, teams that are in the world series. The series is tied, right? You know, one, one, the Arizona diamondbacks, uh, going against the, uh, Texas Rangers, right? So we already know that that's great. That's awesome. That's going on. We can talk about it later. However, what I want to talk about is, um, overall your, your overall fan experience with you and your teams, you know, this year, right? You know, we all are fans of three different teams, three different, um, uh, endings to our two teams, right? Because my team never made it uh, to the playoffs. Patrick, your team made it to the playoffs, but was uh, one and out, right? So one and done, and they were out. Uh, and then our good friend, uh, Paul here, your team made it all the way to the National League uh, Championship. And um, well, they're no longer there. So I want to get you guys' opinion so far of, you know, did, did, did the season for you guys, you know, and, and I'll start with you, Patrick, did, did the season meet your expectations just for your team, right? And just not, not the whole league overall, but your team, did it meet the expectations that you thought that, you know, the team was going to be at? No, 
uh, I had really high hopes going into the season. And I think a lot of, a lot of people did for the blue Jays, to be quite honest. So for those that don't know, I'm a Toronto blue Jays fan and for what they spent in payroll and it's the, the players that they brought in and for a team that overall stayed relatively healthy. I mean, the pitching staff, I think they used seven pitchers in the starting rotation for the whole season, which mm-hmm. is something that most teams hardly ever get to do anymore. So the, the, for the team being so lucky with, with the lack of injuries and everything else, they just underperformed and they were lucky just being completely objective. They were lucky to get into the playoffs. They kind of tripped into the playoffs. So they actually have the Texas Rangers to even thank for even getting into the playoffs because they couldn't do it themselves. So um, I, th- I felt like all season, I felt like the offense was going to be so much better than it was. Uh, one of the question marks, the bullpen actually performed reasonably well. And with, with, with you know, it's something that they tried to shore up you know, in the off season and they did, but mm-hmm. the, but for having such a talented lineup, I mean, it really disappointed. Yeah. Uh, and not a lot of power numbers like Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s numbers were down. George Springer had an up and down season. I mean, Bo Bichette, when he could stay on the field healthy, you know, was was great. He was he was an exception to that. But Dalton Varsho coming over from Arizona, we had a little bit more hope for him. He was great defensively, which we know he can do. You're right. But but at the plate, uh, not you know, we lost a little bit of power that Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who went over to Arizona in that in that trade um, that he brought. And so losing to Oscar Hernandez, you lost a little pop in the lineup and it was just never really replaced. So uh, and, and I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I was not expecting for uh, the Toronto Blue Jays to be swept by Minnesota Twins with, and let's be honest, right? The Minnesota Twins were compared to the, the Blue Jays, they were the inferior team. It's just the way it was. Like, I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. The, the American League Central was an absolute dumpster fire down the river yeah. of, a, of a division that's what it was like it, you know they yeah. they won by default because every single team including my cleveland guardians were an absolute dumpster fire of it of a, of a division so i was not expecting that man no well i mean that's the team you probably would have in the american league if you had tried to pick a team that you would want to face i think it would have been the twins although the twins got hot in in late august and, and into september they had one of the better records and the Blue Jays, the Blue Jays were such a streaky team. That was the problem. They'd they'd win three, they'd lose two, mm-hmm. they'd, they'd win they'd win two, lose three. I mean, they they just never got consistent, and I think consistency yeah. was the problem all season. So I, I uh, high high expectations, um, and deservedly so. But on paper, it looks looks it looks great. But that's why you play 162 game regular season, and at the end at the end of it, you know, you get what you deserve a lot of the time. So. They they didn't turn it on when they needed to, and th- no, that's, why they, that's, that, why that's why they got that's why they got swept in the wild card round. And yeah. I mean, the the Twins were the were the much better team, if I'm being objective in those in those two games. Oh they, yeah, no, one hundred percent, they were the better team. Yeah. Obviously, they won. They swept, you know, the, yeah. in the best of three. But yeah, um, I you know going in, I thought, all right, yeah, yeah. Blue Jays got this. So, so did I. I. I mean, I felt really hopeful because I didn't want to face the Rays again because the Rays slapped the Blue Jays around most of the season. Yeah. And like they did a lot of teams and um, mm-hmm. yeah, so it was disappointing overall, but you know, you still love your team. So I love yeah. them just oh, as yeah. much. I mean, but I'm still a Guardians fan, uh, even with an ugly logo. So, um, <laughs> uh, all right, so, Paul, so, yeah. Paul, let's get, let, let's get to your team, right? Your team, the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, and uh, as you are my friend, you're, you know, love you to death, my friend, but you're like, you know, like you said, you compare yourself to every Philadelphia fan, right? You know, the world is on fire. The wall, you know, the, the world is going to fall apart when it comes to sports in in Philadelphia, but your team was really good this year. Yeah. And I think if we're talking about, you know, I mean, it's a question of perspective, right? Like mm-hmm. if you had told me in May that the Phillies would be playing in game seven of the national league championship series. I'd have signed up for that in a heartbeat, right? I figured most of the season that the Phillies would probably make the playoffs, though it was not a certainty, right? Like it was not a certainty until the last few weeks of the season. And I figured their season would last as long as uh, uh, until they essentially faced the Braves or the Dodgers in the playoffs. I was like, one of those teams will knock them out. I honestly thought they would lose to the Marlins because the Marlins seems seem to have their number. The Phillies beat the Marlins uh, in two straight in the best of three series to start the playoffs. 
and then when they went up against the Braves, I was just like, okay, the Braves are going to exact revenge for last year, and that'll be exactly where I, I expected this season to end. So the fact that the Phillies beat the Braves in the playoffs, that I can watch the World Series right now without having to hear the chop, is, you know, that exceeds my expectations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the problem with that is, right, like you're – you know, sports fans are greedy, right? Like you get greedy. Mm -hmm. And then the Phillies had a two sure. games to none lead in the best of seven series against a team. They had a better record than in the, in the diamondbacks and the diamondbacks looked overmatched after two games to the point where I bought tickets and went to Arizona to watch two baseball games. And it was really humbling to watch them blow a lead uh, against the diamondbacks. And, you know, the diamondbacks evened up the series Phillies went up 3-2 the next night. That was awesome to be there in person for that. You thought, you know, okay, going home. Uh, you know, when they went up 2-0, you're like, oh, they can't lose four out of five. And then they go up 3-2, to and you're like, well, they'll win one out of two at the bank, right? So the wounds are still fresh when it comes to it was a really heartbreaking way to exit the playoffs. You know, yeah. it was – Philly fans don't get optimistic very much. As you say, we live in a constant state of angst and pessimism. And no, so Cleveland as well, <laughs> as Cleveland as we do the same thing. So you reach a point where you're up two games to none in a series against a team that you think you should beat. And then you're up three games to do uh, going back to a place where you've had a massive home field advantage, right? Like the Phillies were eight and two at home in the playoffs up to that point. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, the, the wounds are fresh right now. And so right now, the emotionally, when you say, was this season a, a disappointment or what, how did it match your expectations? Emotionally, it feels like a letdown. Emotionally, it feels just like, man, that there's, I, I, when I watch this playoff series and I'm watching the Diamondbacks and I'm like, God, that should be the Phillies right now. What would the, you know, if this were the Phillies instead of the Diamondbacks, what, you know, what would, what would be happening yeah. right now? And, you know, it's been 15 years since the Phillies won a World Series. I realize that that's more recent than some teams. So I don't want to, you know, cry, woe is me too much on that. But that like, God, it's like, it's harder emotionally to get that close and not make mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. So this has been the, the, the trait though, right? Like every time a Philadelphia, every time Philly fans start feeling not pessimistic, once we start feeling optimistic, that's when the rug gets pulled out from under us. Right. So they're last like, Oh, year, that's, well, that's wonderful. You guys feeling great about exactly. it. Exactly. Last year we were up two games to one in the world series I thought the World Series might not leave Philadelphia after that 7 nothing drubbing of the Astros in Game 3. I was just like, the Phillies might finish this thing off at home. Of course, they lost the next three games. And then a few months later, the Eagles are up by 10 at halftime, and they look like you know they're, they're basically one fumble away from being in total control of the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the rug gets pulled out from under us again. And then, you know, here we are up two games to one and three games to do in the national league championship series. And so what I need to stop doing is having hope. And I think so long as I don't have hope, then my team can keep winning. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> oh, that hurts. That's hurt. I can, I can understand mm -hmm. that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, so, so. How about you, Ed? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, like, yeah, this is, yeah. Well, I'll say this. Like I, I honest to God thought that, after last year of Cleveland, you know, making it to the playoffs, right. And um, getting robbed by the Yankees, because that was, that was a lot of things that went the Yankees way that shouldn't have. Right. I mean, the pass is the pass is over with, and you know what I mean? But we should have advanced instead of the Yankees and not, and, and, but it didn't go our way. I honestly, I, thought, agree. I actually thought that Cle coming in, all right, Cleveland's going to win the division. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and, you know, the, the, the teams that are below Cleveland are still on their way up, but we, we had a shot, did not see what happened with Cleveland, which was, in my opinion, I think there was a complete and total implosion and, um, mismanagement by, not by Terry Francona, because the guy did an absolute wonderful job with what he had, but what you know, what general manager did and all that, like getting rid of a lot of players and bringing in some players that just didn't fit. Right. It just didn't work out. And, and it proved, you know, uh, our pitching, which was supposed to be the strongest thing didn't happen. Right. Um, you had uh, McKenzie who was out for most of the year, right. Justin Bieber out most of the year. They weren't the same people. We got rid of, um, um, 
uh, what is his name now? He, we sent them off to uh, Tampa, right? Um, so I mean, there was a lot of things that it just didn't materialize and it was just disappointing to see, you know, the way that it played out. So uh, I, it, to me, it was a complete and total um, implosion by, by Cleveland at that point. And it was just disappointing to see. And, and Ed, I have a question for a Cleveland fan. Do you, do you think that management gave up on the team too early? Yes. Or the deadline? Yeah. Oh yeah. 100%. They did. They gave up. They w- were still they in waited. it. Yeah, yeah. They, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They were yeah. in it and they were only, and actually at one point they were leading the division mm-hmm. and, and they started making some, some, some moves that I just don't understand where it came from, you know, especially like, these days in a, a landscape where all, all you have to do is make the playoffs, right? right. Those, you know, to, to give up when you're in shouting distance of the, Aaron Savali the was the guy. Oh, Savali. Okay. Yeah. This is, this was – so my running buddy, Chris, we run on Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings at 5.45 a.m. because Chris is a crazy person, and He's we always talk man. baseball. He is a big, big, big Mariners fan, so yeah. I, you know, I, I, I find myself pulling for the Mariners just because of that, right? Like in Ranger Amy and I went to a game in Seattle last year, and that was fun. It was a really fun atmosphere, um, which, by the way, is something I forgot to say about Philly's expectations. I, I meant to say that – the the heartbreak of the playoff exit was is difficult and remains difficult but the season was awesome like the atmosphere at the bank was so much fun like regular season games were drawing 40,000 fans and people were just nuts like even like that highly touted like citizens bank atmosphere in the playoffs mm-hmm. you know it wasn't you know it wasn't playoff level but it was still really fun to go to a game there right like the atmosphere was just buzzing the whole season sure um seattle was a little bit like that seattle you know they made the playoffs for the first time in 20 years uh going back to a game there was just you know it was really fun really fun atmosphere they traded paul seawold at the deadline and missed the playoffs by one game how do you trade your closer and miss the playoffs by one game and guess and, what was one of the, the areas of opportunity for them that they just was not there? Is the bullpen? Yeah, bullpen. right. Um, so, but Paul, uh, I mean, if you're Jerry Depoto, you should just be lucky that the team is competitive. Like, what was it? Like eighty, 54. like 54 percent of the time, or yeah. whatever it is. They should be no. grateful that they even have a winning record. Right. Right. Isn't that what Jerry Depoto this, said? That's exactly what he said. He said that you know he's happy to win fifty four percent of the time, yeah. and that's I'll tell you. That is the thing about being a Phillies fan right now is that that ownership and the general manager are in it to win right now. And that's, you know, it's heartening to know that the ownership and the general manager care about winning right now. Like they're, you know, maybe they don't make all the right moves every single time, but that, you know, I really believe like their, their hearts in the right place. I wish we had your front office in Cleveland, but the problem is, is not, I don't, you know, the front office is actually very guilty as well of doing this, but also ownership is really bad. Yeah. As you know, the Dolans. <laughs> I've been accused of being spoiled because of the relative success that Philadelphia sports teams have had. But uh, outside of the Eagles winning the Super Bowl in 2018, right? Like it's, you know, we don't have that title. And and the Phillies are the one I really care about, right? Like the Sixers, the Flyers, the Eagles could all win titles until the Phillies do, right? Like that's the one that matters. Yeah, but to did, me. Well, hold on. Didn't you guys win in, was it 08? Is it? 2008, 15 yeah. years ago. I mean, Cleveland has been Listen, how long. I I remember it. It happened in my adult life, right? Like I remember. Yeah. I remember never Brad Lynch lifetime. striking out Eric yeah. Hinsky with apologies to Anna DiTomaso. You know, it was uh, the 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 tying run was in scoring position after that forty eight hour rain delay. I mean, it's yep. it's uh, part of the pain of this memory is uh, that my brother told me after the fact that he had a ticket for me, but didn't think that I could get back in time. For the oh, game. no. I was like, Dave, are you kidding? I would have been on that plane in a heartbeat. I was going to say, like, what's that age old saying? You don't know unless you ask. Got to ask. Yeah, he gave, yeah. He like, he like yeah. I don't know, like some sort of lukewarm yeah. friend of his went with him. And he should have so, never, oh. he should have never said that to you. I know, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's one of those like, things. At that point, if you don't invite you, yeah, don't yeah, say yeah. anything else at that point, yeah. because then that, might, that just makes it even worse. And it just, yeah. oh. I know, I know. Right. He has been very generous with sporting tickets of all kinds. Ever since then. Well, since then and before then. <laughs> but he just, he thought it would be torture for me to know that there was a ticket for me and that I couldn't make it back. Mm. At least he could have asked. And then you could have said no. I was like, if that's the, at that point, just say no. I was like, I, I can't make I it, know. dude. That's, you know, it <laughs> is what it is. 
But also oh, knowing well. you, you would have moved heaven and earth to get there. So, Except um, for I would have worried that it was a jinx. And that's what I worried about with this trip mm-hmm. to Arizona this past weekend or two weekends ago, right? Like was, you know, like, oh, God, am I jinxing them by going through all this trouble to get there? I, see, I don't think there's I, I don't think that's a jinx. I think that's, you know, us being fans. We're like, if you have an opportunity mm-hmm. to go and 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 enjoy that in playoffs, yeah. I think you like if you have the yeah. ability and and the yeah. means to do it, you do it. Yeah. There's no way I, I, I yeah. would have done the exact same thing. Right. That was ultimately – sorry, go ahead, Pat. Oh, no. I was – finish your thought because I I was going to go in a different direction with that. Well, ultimately, that was my thought, right? Like, I waited 10 years for the Phillies to get back to the playoffs and to have a chance to go see them even on the road. You know, I don't don't know. I don't know if the Phillies are going to be in the playoffs next year or within the next 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years. 100%. You know, so I did it. Yeah. Yep. And I had a chance with the Blue Jays. I had, a, I had a buddy in Toronto that invited me up and I didn't take advantage of it. And I regret it because it was the first time they'd made, you know, that was when they broke the playoff drought of, you know, the longest um, playoff drought in North American sports at the time. And, mm-hmm. the, and they were, they were in and they, they made a run and I had a chance to go up there and see a, a home game and I didn't do it. And I still regret it. So yeah. good on you, Paul, for taking advantage of it. Well, you had the added complication of your passport being revoked after those felony convictions. So, but hundred percent, you know, so it's harder I, I to get to Toronto. I, I thought we were going to keep criminal. that. I thought we were going to keep that you know, before before we went on air. You know, <laughs> sorry, uh, criminal. Sorry, I, 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 no, I think that's my pre note. My pre meeting. I enjoyed notes having a. That I was pertinent a information job. to put out there. I mean, that's part <laughs> yeah. of the the information that you need to put out there, uh, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, Ed, is there is there a position? Is there a current position open for like a producer of the of the Deadhead Chronicles Sports Show? Because I'm currently going to be looking for new employment. Uh, uh, you know, you know we'll, we'll discuss this off off air. Um, okay, we'll discuss this off air. Sounds good. <laughs> um. All right. So now that we talked about our individual uh, teams, you know, when it comes to baseball, uh, you know, what was your overall feelings on how this major league season went for you guys overall? Right. You know, let's take out the teams, but I'm just talking about, you know, the crest, right. Major league baseball. How, how did you guys think that it go, that it went, did you guys went as expected? Uh, Was there any surprises, anything that you, you wish baseball would do different? And Paul, I will hold off on trying to talk about uh, the runner on second. Okay. We get it. (laughs) Uh, Well, You'll note that they don't do the runner on second during the playoffs because they want to play real baseball for now. This is I feel I feel like this is uh, I have a I have a moment here to have a, a a moment of clarity, a moment of discussion. I think that it's a sign of of emotional maturity and uh, ability to be introspective and to to maybe even emotional intelligence to look at something look at the evidence and admit that your opinion was wrong oh this is going to be good and ed i'm giving you the chance to do that with the runner on second your opinion is wrong about the runner on second. i'm just kidding no <laughs> I, I am using this moment to say i may have been wrong about the pitch clock after a season of the pitch clock in major league baseball there were aspects of it that i enjoyed right like uh I think maybe it could still be relaxed a little bit. I think it doesn't. I think that maybe it's a little bit of overkill. It could be a, a couple seconds longer. But mm-hmm. but in general, I I liked I liked the effect that the pitch clock rule had on baseball. Now, that being said, the the runner on second is just little league goofiness that like feels just wacky to me, and it changes the nature of the game. The other rule that I really, really don't like, like as the way I wondered how I would feel about it. So here are the one uh, I'm going to say this, and you guys feel free to jump in at any time because I could just go on and on and on. But oh, I'm I'm loving this. So go go <laughs> ahead, keep going. I'll jump in. I, don't you worry. The, the yeah, pitch I'm clock, pitch clock. I ultimately ended up enjoying mm-hmm. the ban on the shift. I ended up enjoying. I liked seeing balls that looked like they were meant to go up the middle actually go up the middle. Right? Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know the, the effect on the game. I I enjoyed the effect on the game that those two rules had. Uh, the larger bases, I don't know. I liked the stolen bases. There were a lot of stolen bases. Some records. I enjoy that. that yeah, sort of I, mean, I, so, I thought I was going to hate that too. rule. To be honest with you, I thought I was yeah. that was going to be the one that I was going to be pissed uh, off about, like the fact that like they increased the size of the other yeah. uh, uh, yeah. bases. 
I actually ended up enjoying it more yeah. stolen bases. That was that yeah. was I'm okay with that one. So am I because I, I I thought that you know losing the art of like say what a Ricky Henderson or a Lou Brock would have done. I mean the art of stealing a base, right? I mean you yeah. didn't see that, and now with this advent of the of the of the bigger base, you started to see people like you said. You started to see a running game again, which added yeah. a dimension back to the game, which I really enjoyed seeing. Yeah. yeah. And even though he plays on a team that I root actively against, uh, to see what Acuna did this year was unbelievable, right? Oh, like that yeah. with all yeah. of his stolen bases and his power numbers. Like, man, there's a player who, you know, you root against because he's not on your team. But man, you know, it's hard. It's hard to dislike that guy. I really like Acuna a lot, like as a player. Yeah, um, yeah 100%. Hope you guys enjoy part one of three of uh, my conversation with Patrick Larson of the MILB Hat History and um, my good friend Paul Caputo of uh, Baseball by Design. We had a lot of fun. Uh, guys, this whole ep- the whole conversation happened over one night. It was too long, so I had to break it down. But let me tell you guys, it is well worth it because we had a blast. We talked a lot about uh, Major League Baseball rules, what we like, what we didn't like. All of that. What we thought about the Major League Baseball season uh, from our uh, individual uh, fan perspective of our individual teams, as well as the league overall, as well as other cool conversations that we had regarding the league. So stay tuned uh, for next week, as well as that part two. And uh, and then I, I cannot leave you guys uh, without asking you a couple of things. One, make sure you guys are following the Data Chronicles. Uh, I am on Instagram, on Twitter, I'm on threads. Um, make sure that you also also follow me on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern time. I do have the Dat High Chronicle Sports Show. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I am on YouTube uh, when it comes to that. Uh, I do do it through uh, Twitter and Facebook. So I will be putting more information out there. It's a lot of fun. You guys got to listen to it because we're not only covering baseball, but we're also covering football, basketball, um, hockey, all of that, college football as well. So um, go ahead and uh, give it a follow and g- uh, give it thumbs up. All right, so let's end this episode with a good dad joke, right? This is what we're all waiting for here, guys. Let's be honest. And here it is. What do you call a leg wearing a hat? A kneecap. (laughs) All right, guys. Uh, I'll leave you with that. Until then, uh, keep grinding and always, always support the minor leagues. See ya. (laughs) I'm tired. I'm going to bed. It's 9 o'clock in the Mountain Time Zone.